Right, so for all of you who have been waiting for this moment to come, Danielle is finally single and back on the market. It's now been a year since her divorce from Muhammad was made official by the courts and six months since we last saw them in that fiery tell-all. At the end of the tell-all, Danielle threatened to sue Muhammad and to deliver her folder of evidence to immigration, but she has yet to do either. And that is partly due to the fact that, for the first time since Muhammad entered her life, she has been putting herself and her family first. What I'm doing now to move on from Muhammad, I'm focusing on my kids and my family. I've been exercising, I'm going to school, I'm focused on improving my life. It's about time. She should really have been doing all this while she was still with Muhammad. Then maybe things would have worked out better with him and with her family. But better late than never, I guess. Anyway, given Danielle is making such good progress focusing on herself, Beth wants to find out if she really is over Muhammad. And so she asks her if he's still in the picture at all. Unsurprisingly, in response, Danielle admits that she hasn't cut ties with him completely. Well, I reached out to him. And I didn't think he would respond, but he did. He responded. I also am surprised that he wrote back given how the last tell all ended, but I'm not surprised in the slightest that she's still clinging on to him. I just cannot imagine a time where Danielle isn't still pursuing Muhammad. Like it will be her wedding day with another man and she'll still be messaging him. To see if you'd help me make a website because I know you know how to do it. And I was surprised he wrote back. <sighs> for help making a website as well. What a load of waffle. Firstly, as if Muhammad is the only person in North America that knows how to make a website. And secondly, what the hell is she making a website for? The only thing I could possibly think of would be to publicly document how Muhammad supposedly scammed her for a green card. And to be honest, it would be such a Danielle thing to do to then ask Muhammad for help making it. So, oh. you, okay, I, I, I've never said that you're a dumbass or anything, okay? I'm gonna say this, you're a damn dumbass. I mean, I don't know how she's even remotely surprised, but it must be so infuriating for her. How many times has she got to tell Danielle that Muhammad isn't good for her, that he doesn't want her, and that she's got to move on before it sinks into her smooth brain? And the most frustrating thing is that Danielle isn't even honest about it. I don't want him really in my life at all. I keep giving him shots, but he keeps wasting those shots. She cannot claim that she doesn't want him in her life when she uses any excuse to desperately cling on to contact with him. Also, I despise how she makes out like she's giving him chances he should be grateful for, as though he's fumbling opportunities she's giving him rather than outright rejecting them. She's also in this weird state of asking him for favours trying to keep him around whilst also trying to sue him. And so she finally reveals what exactly she's trying to sue him for. I paid for his airline ticket. I supported him the whole time he was here with me. So I'm suing him to get all my money back. Yeah, good luck with that. Now that the court has ruled that their marriage was valid, what was hers was his. You can't just get divorced and get all the money you spent on your partner back. That completely misses the point of a marriage being a partnership. And also, as we've said many times, from the second he was able to, he paid his own way and supported her back. Either way though, this is all still hypothetical because she still doesn't know where he lives and so can't serve him with papers. Muhammad, he tries to hide where he's living at but Muhammad likes attention. I mean, he posts every single day. This is such stalker mentality. I post on social media pretty much every day too, but that doesn't mean I want people to know where I live. Being active online doesn't forfeit your right to a private life. Unfortunately though, Beth and Danielle either don't understand that or just don't care. So they set out to find where he lives. Rather foolishly, it turns out Muhammad has posted a video of his neighborhood. And so they search the area on Street View to see if they can find it. That neighborhood looks like what's on that video. Same vehicle, same house. Look, so I think we have a good address. I think you got him. The only reason I can slightly justify this is because it's to enable lawful service of court papers in the pursuit of justice. If she wasn't at least claiming that all of this was to exercise her legal rights, I'd be condemning this a lot more strongly. And to be honest, it would probably be bordering on an actual crime. Beth is obviously happy to help Danielle sue Muhammad because she absolutely despises him. But like us, she's doubtful that Danielle hasn't got an ulterior motive to finding out where he lives. You can look me in the eye and say, if he walked through the door tomorrow and said, Danielle, I'm so sorry, we take me back, you wouldn't. Nope. She even lies like a child. That little smirk with the head shake tells you everything you need to know. Well, next up, we're going to find out how Danielle's dating life is going 
with a mystery man and a potential date on the cards. But first, a quick message from today's paid partnership with BetterHelp. From divorce to heartbreak to financial problems, Danielle is going through a lot. And to be honest, who isn't? Sometimes the reality is that life can get tough. But thankfully, whatever you're going through, therapy can give you the tools to approach your life in a very different way. Finding a therapist can be hard and finding the right therapist can be even harder. But that is exactly why BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy accessible. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easy because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out just a few questions, BetterHelp can match you with a credentialed therapist in as little as a few days. Also, if you don't really fit with that therapist, which is a common thing during therapy, you can easily switch to a new one at no additional cost. It's so easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. All you have to do is click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com forward slash Arthur TV. Not only does that link help support this channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. So you can connect with the therapist and see if it helps you. So if you're struggling with anything at all, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Remember the link to that is in the description or you can visit betterhelp.com forward slash Arthur TV. Huge thank you to BetterHelp for supporting this channel. Now let's get back to the video. So later on in the evening, Daniel goes to a pub with her friend Angela, who is also a single mother. There, Danielle reveals that she and her previous boyfriend have decided to see other people. How is your uh, dating life going? So the one guy that I've been seeing, we're long distance, so we've agreed that we'll start seeing other people, but still see each other when we can. This, by the way, is the man that Danielle was with when she got mad at Muhammad for posting that photo of himself with Diamond. Anyway, Danielle decided that she couldn't move to him because she's in nursing school and her kids are in Ohio. And he decided that he couldn't move because he has a good job where he is. So as a result, Danielle is now single and back on the market, but just the local market this time. I'm not looking for an international guy. I don't trust him no more. I have international men messaging me all the time. I'm like, no. This is so funny. I just know some of them saw her on 90 Day Fiancé and were like, this sucker is an easy ticket to the US. She doesn't need to rule out all international men though. She just needs to be less delusional and take time to make sure that their intentions are pure and that they're definitely right for each other. No more meeting someone who seems too good to be true and then marrying them a few months later. Also, ruling out the majority of men on earth is a pretty bold move because I'm not sure she's quite in a position to be particularly picky. For now though, this isn't an issue because she's recently met a guy online called Nelson and he's from the US. He's 35. Okay. At least he's local, right? No, he what? lives in Maryland. Wow. Yeah. I guess it's better than Tunisia. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So Maryland is obviously a different state to Ohio, but it's also about a six hour drive door to door. That however, hasn't put them off. Now that they've been talking online for a while, they've decided to meet up for a date. Rather than meeting in the middle though, Danielle is committed to doing the entire drive herself. Angela asks if that means that she's gonna stay the night there. And if so, is that at the guy's house or in a hotel? And Danielle claims that she's gonna be staying in a hotel by herself. You could have a booty call. Yeah, I could. But told me I am. I have reasons <laughs> why I don't. Well, nothing wrong with that. I'm not a floozy, sorry to say. <laughs> it seems like Angela is a sex positive type of person and that Danielle kind of insulted her by saying that anyone who goes for a booty call is a floozy and kind of looking down on them. It's a bit of a bizarre angle too because it's not her moral standards holding her back. She hinted at it there saying that she has her reasons why she doesn't, but she goes on to confirm that it's mainly due to her insecurity at the feminine hygiene problem that Muhammad confirmed in that tell-all episode a few seasons back. He has told people that I smell and I do. peed on him. Well, whatever Danielle intends to do with this man, the following morning she sets off, but there are already red flags appearing in the distance. I've tried calling him and he's not responding. That was her getting out in his driveway, by the way. How crazy is that? She literally did the full six hour drive on complete radio silence. No confirmation before she set off that he was going to be there and nothing since. Honestly, even if she couldn't wait to set off, she should have seriously considered turning around when she got to the halfway point and she still hadn't heard from him. But I guess if there's one thing Danielle isn't, it's a quitter.
brutal. You know, I'm sure she saw it coming, but him not answering the door will have crushed that final ounce of hope that probably still remained in her cold, withered heart. After the Muhammad saga, I have no idea why she wanted her love life to be documented for the entire nation to see all over again. This is just embarrassing. To rub even more salt into the wounds, she then tries calling him again, but it just goes straight to voicemail. Another day, another Danielle L caught on video. It's weird though, it's not like they arranged to meet out. This is his house. So where is he? Even if he got cold feet, where did he go? Isn't there a good chance that he's just inside the house, not saying anything? I can imagine him in there like a kid playing hide and seek, just sat in silence whilst the seeker walks past. Either way, I'm surprised Daniel just got up and left so easily. If this was Muhammad, she'd be pitching up a tent on that front yard until he showed up. It's like people don't care that people took time off and drove six hours and paid tolls and gas. It feels like it's another repeat of Muhammad. I'm not quite sure what she meant by a repeat of Muhammad, but on the other point, she's right. This is so poor from Nelson. I mean, ghosting messages is one thing, but making someone drive for six hours and cross state lines to see you and then ghosting them is crazy. He could have at least told her he changed his mind before making her go through all of that effort just to have to turn around again. I'm thinking, what's wrong with me? Why? I actually do feel bad for her now. She was responsible for a lot of what happened in her relationship with Muhammad, but she's done nothing wrong here. I mean, maybe she didn't get to know this guy well enough, or maybe we've got the complete wrong side of the story, and she pressured him into this when he didn't want to, or just straight up invited herself around. But from what we can see at least, there's no reason to believe that she deserved this. I feel cursed by Muhammad. It all started with him. All right, come on now. How is this Muhammad's fault? I feel like she seriously needs to get over that situation before she can move on in a healthy way because that reaction is not normal. Thankfully though, this whole ordeal hasn't dampened her spirit and there are plenty more dates coming up in this 90 Day The Single Life saga. So if you enjoyed this video and want to find out what happens next, make sure you're subscribed down below. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.